You are watching the New American Media. Live from the Milky Way galaxy, the solar system planet Earth, Los Angeles, California to be exact. Hello everybody, my name is Brian Engelman, thank you for joining us here on TNAM Radio, part of the NewAmericanMedia.com. Thank you so much for joining us today on Agree to Disagree. <laughs> Speaking of Agree to Disagree, I think we've been planning, we've been doing some, some show prep here, and I think we're going to have a show coming up on the Antichrist. You want to talk about Agree to Disagree? Yeah, we'll be talking about the Antichrist all the way back to Henry Kissinger. People were saying, this guy's the Antichrist. George Bush, he's the Antichrist. Barack Obama, he's the Antichrist. Yeah, we got a future show coming up, so we're just going to give you a little bit of advance notice that you need to stick around and check out what we're doing. And the best way to do that, of course, is to pay attention to our home site, thenewamericanmedia.com. Check out what's going on over there. If you're listening to this after the fact, thank you very much. But make sure you click subscribe to thenewamericanmedia.com. You can find us at youtube.com slash thenewamericanmedia. And on Twitter, we're at American underscore media underscore. we got a few things to talk about today. First, I think I think we just have to have our election reaction because I, I, we need to put this behind us and move along. And in some ways, maybe it's exactly what we needed. I said if our country's stupid enough to give, give another four years to more of the same, we get what we deserve. We, we, need, we need to figure this out. So we got four more years, thank God. Then we're going to talk about the Iranian drone attack that we never heard about. That's fantastic. Price gouging after Hurricane Sandy. Yeah, let's throw people in jail because they're, <laughs> they're understanding supply and demand. That sounds fantastic. And General David Petraeus resigning. Right. Sure, that has nothing to do with Benghazi. I'm sure there's nothing else to see there. Not a bizarre story or anything. It's just, it's comical to me. Well, it's it's sad, it's shocking, and it's it's frustrating, but it's also comical, and we have to acknowledge that. So, to bring in a few funny guys that I know, uh, first person we want to introduce this, his name is Blake the Eccentric Wally. He is a radio host and a blogger. His homepage is eccentricperspective.com, and he does live radio over on the Freedomizer Radio Network. He does Eccentric Perspective Monday, Wednesday, Thursday from noon to 1.30 p.m. Pacific. And you can go on iTunes and get a podcast for that by searching Eccentric Perspective. Blake, Wally, how are you doing today, sir? Very well, Brian. Well, thank you very how much. How are you? Oh, I'm living the dream. You know the, you know the answer to that. Right. I already, yeah, exactly. Living the dream. Um, but, yes, thanks for joining us. I, I regularly co-host with Blake over on FreedomizerRadio.com. And that's usually on Mondays from noon to 1.30 p.m. Pacific. So check us out over there. also want to welcome back to the program another special co-host who has been in studio before. Not, not too many people can say that, but Mark has been in studio over here. And Mark runs a little website called Lions of Liberty. Lions of Liberty, like the Penn State Nittany Lion. L-I-A-S. It's actually that exact lion. It is <laughs> actually for copyright purposes, it's not that exact lion. But um, we, it was founded with a few of uh, my friends who all went to Penn State, so that's kind of where we got the inspiration. This is this is true, and and you guys are very libertarian. You're getting to the anarcho libertarian stuff. Which Ooh, is danger! Danger, danger! But it's exciting and it's interesting. <laughs> um, let's see for for sh- for uh, shopkeeping purposes before we get rolling here. Uh, let's see. Blake, you can follow him on Twitter. He's at Eccentric99. And you can follow Mark. He's at Lions of Liberty. Correct? Just straightforward Lions of Liberty. Okay. Let's get into election reaction. We'll start with Blake. Blake, uh, you and I did briefly. I mean, I, we haven't even talked since the election. I, I refused to take your phone call the night of. I just, I, <laughs> I, I remember that. I was calling you. I was like, "Dude, I got to talk to Brian." And I said, "No, I man." Just I rang and rang. Yep. I can't. I can't. I. I Brian's so, not home right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no beer and no TV make Brian something, something go crazy. Don't mind if I do. Um, but yeah, I, I couldn't take the phone call. I really can't believe our country did what it did. Some people are talking about voter fraud. I haven't seen any evidence of it. But it just it, the finger on the pulse did not seem like there was a stomach to to reelect this man for four years. Blake, what are your thoughts on this reelection? 
My thoughts are this. I know a lot of people are uh, feel that way. They're angry about uh, how do people go out and vote for Obama and more of the same. And I, I think it's really simple. I, I blame the Republicans. I blame uh, the, the brain trust, whether you think it's Karl Rove or perhaps Reince Priebus, chairman of the National Republican, whatever you have it, uh, being in charge and putting up Mitt Romney as a candidate. If it seems like simple math to me, you want to win an election, you want to get as many people to go out and vote, and the people that are, you know, you can get people that are excited and informed about their candidate to go vote. They clearly had a second option, who I won't name, but uh, they chose Mitt Romney, and they lost, and they didn't give Obama people a true alternative. Who did they expect uh, you know, Obama people to go vote for. I mean, that'd be one thing. So I guess, I guess that's why we, uh, that's my take on it. That's, that's one reason uh, it went down, and I, I would blame a lot of that on Rove and the Republican Party. Well, let's move over to you, Mark. What are your thoughts on this election? Some people are saying that, well, you know, and, and you wrote about it. Let, let me ask you specifically this way. You wrote a piece that we we tweeted out. If you could remind us of the title of your piece that they can find over at lionsofliberty.com. You were talking about a silver lining of sorts to, to the, another Barack Obama term. Yes, that's actually the title. Silver lining to the Obama victory. Hey, hey. Um, yeah, I mean, we've had a little bit of debate amongst ourselves over at Lions of Liberty about you know, we don't support either candidate, obviously, um, but, you know, which, knowing that one of these circumstances is going to happen, you know, what's the better outcome? And three of the four of us thought that Obama winning was the, the less potentially bad outcome, um, which might seem strange to many people that, you know, that Noah says, you know, I think libertarians are often more associated with the Republican side. You know, we don't want government spending. We don't want these government programs, yada, yada, yada. Um, Throw grandma off a cliff. Right. Yes, push grandma off a cliff, um, push her off the fiscal cliff, all that stuff. There you go. <clears throat> so but, so, uh, so the, the silver lining, what are some of the key points? What, what, are, what are some of the reasons why that this could be a good thing? Because, you know, I, I, I heard reaction across the board of, well, you know what? I'm just going to, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And, of course, I start singing that 80s song. When the going gets rough. No, I'm not going to sing it, but uh, th that song popped into my head, the 80s song. Uh, so, okay, so maybe it's time to... Billy to, Ocean. Thank you. A little Billy Ocean action. Um, yeah, so the going gets tough, the tough get going, and now it's our time to kind of put together a viable alternative to beat down big government. Um, not that it's Republican or Democrat, it's just either big government or personal freedom and liberty. Um, but then other people were saying, really, there is nothing positive to take from this election. There is nothing good about this because— Well, we I, got a, I got a big positive. Okay, let's hear it. I'll tell you right now what the biggest positive is. Yes. Twelve million people, less people, voted this year than four years ago. So you subscribe to the George Carlin philosophy of... I'm not saying voting doesn't have its place, might not have its place, might not be effective in the right circumstance, but I think in this situation we're in, where the options that the system has presented are so clearly the same, uh, I know we have Gary Johnson, but let's be honest, the system is not designed for people like that to win, they're not allowed in debates, they are have to spend all their time and resources, I mean, Gary Johnson's campaign ended in debt, because all they're doing is trying to get on ballots, they're getting lawsuits against them from the GOP left and right, so it's a, it's a clearly rigged system, and I think that the rejection, the flat out rejection of that system is a positive, because these people, that's 12 million people more that are not trying to go to a booth, click a button and say, I want this. I want stuff. I want your stuff. I want more stuff given to me. And that's, that's I think, a, a kind of a sign of the times showing that people are starting to understand that the system is BS. The system is designed to control us, designed to make us feel like we have a voice feel like we have a choice by going and casting, you know, by, by, you know, punching some chads or whatever, and then going home for four years and feeling like we did our duty and everything's going to work out. So I think the more people that are trying to see that that's not necessarily the answer, the more chance people are going to look to other solutions, other non-governmental solutions, and start really thinking outside the box about how we can change things and how we can kind of, you know, look at things differently. But um, to get back real quick to that silver lining we're talking about, I mean, I think 
Uh, the real silver lining is that uh, Romney didn't win. <laughs> I mean, it's great that Obama won. I mean, didn't, I'm sorry. It's great that it, it's not good that Obama won, but it also would have been really bad if Romney won. So the fact that he's not there with his little cadre of neocons, it, it's literally the same group that planned and executed the Iraq war were, were Mitt Romney's foreign policy advisors. Um, and it, the, at least Obama's gone in four years for good or bad, we could have been stuck with Ada Romney, who's a, a near clone, only possibly will, you know, nuke the Middle East. So I, I think, and I think that's why there's just no way real libertarians and, and Ron Paul supporters and people that even like just plain old Tea Party, small government people stay at home instead of going and voting for this guy, you know? And, and like you said, it may be time for the tough medicine. Let's get socialism uh, how it's, you know, presented because you don't want it. You don't want to confuse people. If you get Mitt Romney up there, pretending to like free markets and talking about free markets when really we're just getting more of the same fascism i think it'll it's not going to help the cause of libertarian you know liberty and libertarianism if people start to kind of associate mitt romney style republicanism republicanism with that and of course fascism is the blend of government and private corporations which is exactly what we have now with auto bailouts with aig bailouts with Goldman Sachs with with Chase and JP Morgan you know with with all of these major companies that are so inter intertwined with our government we truly do have a fascist state we're not talking Nazis and and Hitler and salutes we're talking about corporations blending with government causing some bad things but Blake let me ask you this because you were one of the the, the delegates um, you you were someone who was involved in the Republican Party, if only as much as attempting to try to steer the ship away from uh, hitting the sand, if you will. And you got to kind of see how the sausage is made. That's a, that's you know a little phrase <laughs> that they use bit, in Washington. Yeah. You you got to see how the sausage is made. Can you can you just enlighten us real quick? <sighs> your perceptions t walking away from yeah you know what I actually donated a lot of my time a bunch of my money I, 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 I and a piece of my heart to try to get involved in this system that, that Mark was saying people like Gary Johnson and Ron Paul have no chance of winning what was your experience walking away seeing the machine and watching how the sausage was made tell it t explain to us what it was like well I did get to see a couple of uh, dirty tricks firsthand um Yes, and I, I've volunteered a, a lot of time. I switched over to, uh, you know, Republicans so I could uh, help Ron Paul. Um, got involved in the process because Nevada's a caucus state. But anyway, um, yeah, so between all the volunteering I did, uh, signing up as a district coordinator, uh, you know, making phone calls, running around the neighborhood, flying up to Reno, becoming a delegate... Uh, bumper sticker, yard signs, uh, and like Mark, I had my own website, uh, as well as being on the radio, promoting Ron Paul, really working, donating money, all that good stuff. Uh, I did go up to uh, Reno or Sparks for the Nevada State uh, Convention to determine, you know, how many delegates we were going to send to Florida. Um, not only did I capture, you know, blatant uh, ballot, you know, election fraud, they were trying to trick uh, Ron Paul supporters into voting for uh, Mitt Romney people. Uh, they also had the uh, Reince Priebus, the uh, was a chairman of the National you know, Republican Party, uh, basically threatening that they, he wanted 20 delegates to be for Romney to come down to Florida. And uh, but you know what? Uh, out of the 25 delegates, we took uh, 22 of the 25, so even though they tried to cheat us. And of course, uh, they cheated Ron Paul once they got to Tampa. They started freaking out about all the delegates maybe perhaps being unbound and uh, voting for their conscience. So they they cheated Ron Paul. He needed to have five states won, and they raised the requirement to eight. I don't know if it was the day of or the day before. But they cheated everybody, and uh, he was the guy who would have taken, he, who would have gotten that passionate vote, the young, the young people uh, voting, the independents. Uh, he would have uh, carried this, uh, and of course, you, you could only imagine what would have happened during the debates uh, versus Obama, and you know, somebody speaking in common sense, and of course, agreeing with uh, Obama on a lot of the social issues that would have really confused a lot of people and really 
uh, given people a, a true alternative rather than Romney, where you probably saw uh, zero? Did, uh, I, I don't know. We've talked about this, Brian. I don't know if Mark has seen. Uh, do, do you think that anybody who voted for Obama in 08 actually went out and voted for Romney in 2012? Did, did, did Romney cause people to cross party lines for a real alternative, or was this all just a big scam? So I, I don't know. The numbers show that it doesn't even look like the Republicans that voted for McCain came out for Romney, so let alone the Republicans yeah. or the, the Democrats that voted for Obama. See, now I find that shocking. died off by the, <laughs> A lot of know, them I mean, may who have died vote for off. Anyway. Well, I didn't want to say it, but... Uh, yeah. Well... You know, after, after the twenty ten, okay. but now that it's been said, all right, we're, we're 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 giddily giggling about old Republicans that have died off. We've hit a new low. No, but but let's let's talk about that because after the twenty ten midterm elections, I saw people standing up in this country saying, "Enough of this crap. This is the wrong direction." Where did that energy and momentum go to stop more of this socialized, big government, progressive? Nightmare Orwellian personal liberty stealing agenda. Where where was this backlash? Where did it go? It just gave up, or I mean, it, they couldn't have all been old dudes that died off in the Republican Party that weren't replaced. I, I, that, that's why I just I'm having a hard time understanding this this voting record, uh, saying that that so many fewer people voted. I, does it seem right to, to Mark? I'll start with you. Does it seem right to you that that so many people? opted out of the system versus standing up and rejecting uh, the direction we've been headed under Barack Obama? Yeah, I mean, and I think that people, a lot of people just didn't see an alternative because I think a lot of people did get disgusted with Obama, and I think you saw that, like you were saying, in 2010, that there was a lot of, you know, supposed Tea Party people, um, some legit, some maybe not so much, but um, I think that when we're specifically talking about this particular Obama Romney scenario, those people weren't in any way ready to to toss that over to Romney. So I think a, a lot of people might have left Obama, but a lot of those people could not be captured by the Republican Party at the same time, which in one way highlights the you know the how stupid a, a two party system is. I know we have other parties, but it's a two party system, and it's really a one party system that has two kind of warring factions that that kind of vie for power every few years. But I, I think, like I said before, it's just a realization that the system is rigged. Maybe some people aren't having this grand revelation. Maybe they're just specifically, you know, repulsed by both of these candidates and didn't really see the um, the point in maybe going and voting for a Gary Johnson or a Jill Stein or any of those third party candidates. Because I think they also know that that is a protest vote. And you know what? Some people might, instead of, you know, taking a half hour out of their day to go cast a vote that they know won't do anything would rather go maybe spend that time with their family or who knows you know we all have limited time in the day so yeah maybe i could maybe i could pick up a wrench and bash myself in the skull for 30 <laughs> minutes and, and feel a little bit better at the end of the outcome anyway uh you know I, and i had i i've said that it, it's it's a dark day in america <laughs> where i a, as a voter as an american as an engaged citizen as as a um, carrier of this torch of liberty as best I can, I am completely opposed to most of the important parts of Barack Obama's administration from, from his stance on guns and global governance and the NDAA and the surveillance state and the Patriot Act and all of the things that Barack Obama has proven to be, yet I could not and would not hold my nose and vote for the Republican option because I don't see it as an option. And after the way that they changed their own rules against Ron Paul just to cheat, it, it was so transparent to me. I decided I cannot hold my nose and vote Republican this time. And maybe it was easier for me to to, to vote my conscience and, and give a protest vote because I, I personally believe <laughs> – wait, I, now I'm sounding like that like that Miss, Miss Teen America. I personally believe, therefore, such as the Iraq, they don't have maps. Um, but I, I, couldn't, right. I couldn't vote for Mitt Romney. I could not vote for Romney this time. And I think it's sad that we could not find an opposite to Barack Obama as an option to vote for. Blake – <laughs> I think we found him. <laughs> well, okay, just, uh, but know. but he's but it's not a viable option. So, so let me ask you, Blake, w yeah. what does the country do move moving forward? Because you tried to participate in the system, 
it didn't really work out so well. And shockingly enough, uh, the Monopoly man got defeated in this election. What do you do moving forward the next two years, next four years? Um, attack the media. That's about all I really can do is go after the mainstream media and try to, uh, I don't know, discredit it enough or reach out to enough people to realize that, uh, like what Mark is saying, that the system is rigged. It's a two-party monopoly. They're basically the same. They just go out, and everybody who saw those debates, it was a big insult. They were just allowed to sit and BS each other with, you know, the you know softball uh, questions and mainstream moderators that would allow them to just sit there and, and, and BS the public and give campaign speeches and, and talking points, and it was... Uh, it was very sad, and uh, I, I really hope things change. I don't know exactly uh, what else to do. I know there's a lot of other people working on other fronts to get third-party candidates in there. Uh, I was hoping Gary Johnson would at least get 5%, so he would be able to get a lot of big money rolling in and, and be able to uh, get a bigger platform. But uh, it's clear that those two major you know, Democrats and the Republicans have conspired to basically uh, keep third parties out of the debates. Which means it's taking... a one-party system. It, it's, right. you know, if, if the Yankees and the Giants, uh, the San Francisco Giants, conspired to not let any of the other teams compete, and it's always a Yankees-Giants World Series or something like that. I mean, I mean if you conspire against everyone else and you <laughs> get rid of all your doesn't sound bad. Competi- I'm a Yankee fan. I can live with that. Yankee fan, you're a really? Yankee Ooh, fan. Is, this, is the secret out? Has this not been discussed in public? With now, us? now I get that you're a Jerry Sandusky before. fan. I, I I get that you've been <laughs> a fan. We of probably should save this for off air. Grand fan, you're his. Now I, I, I just a huge Indians fan over here. What about you, Blake? You're what? What Twins? What do you I'm like a the- former Cubs and Twins fan. I have uh, given up on baseball, and I've freed up seven months of my time. Yeah, <laughs> I'm happy about that. And I thank the Yankees. I want to thank the Yankees for uh, for curing me of all that time after uh, you know beating up on the Twins three times in, in the playoffs. So it's kind of like, why I am I watching that. this for six months, putting all my time and you know energy into this? And then watching my small market uh, twins get beat up by a two hundred million dollar juggernaut. You know what? That sounds pretty much like. What's the point of that? That what sounds exactly point? like being a Gary Johnson fan or a libertarian <laughs> or a a third party <laughs> option against analogy. the big boys. So you know we can talk about that, and I like to blend this together because we obviously do sports shows over here. The unhappy hour we do those every Friday, three thirty p.m. Pacific, and you can check out the archives online. I'll tell you what. Let's take a quick break because something Blake that you were talking about you were you were mentioning um that what's left to do what what can you do in the next two years four years beat up on the media well the media just gave us an awesome story today about cia director david petraeus what we're gonna break this down because where was this story last week also what about this iranian drone that was that was shot down but we didn't hear anything about that until after the election or what about the candy crowley moment or what about let's just go along the lines and discuss how this dinosaur media is completely complicit for the democratic party and whether you love fox news or not um you got to admit that 90 something percent of the television media was completely an extension of the democratic party and i find it disgusting that they can't go after the corruption as they find it but now david petraeus resigns after after an extramarital affair. I'm not quite buying that story. So let's do this. We'll just pause for a station identification here on the TNAM radio network, and we'll come back and we'll talk about some of these media foibles on the other side. You are listening to the New American Media. 